as we move toward the beginning of our homegoing celebration, we have about another eight or nine minutes for those of you who would like to have a final viewing because at the end of the service, the casket will not be reopened. So if that's your desire, would you do that at this time? We want to start promptly at the 11 o'clock hour. I would ask in deference to the family, those who do come around, do not linger long at the casket. Allow others to have an opportunity to pay their final respects as well. So we will begin the service at the 11 o'clock hour. You may have your final viewing now.
Let the church say amen. amen. Isn't that an appropriate song that during this time when you don't have enough to make it through, that God, God comes in and he fills in the gap. He is the one that will comfort you. He is the one that will come alongside of you. He is the one that, and the only one that can reach down inside of you and heal where it hurts. But this morning, we're just not come to talk about comfort. We want to do celebration. We want to celebrate the life of Helen Lucille Dabney because God gave her to us as a gift. And we just want to applaud the Lord for giving us that many years of her being able to to be a blessing to our lives. Maya Angelou said something that I think is appropriate to mention at this time. She said, instead of frowning because it's gone, smile because it was. Smile because it was. Our program is printed as we will follow it. We will have our scripture, Mama's favorite scripture, Psalm 23, and he's also going to do the prayer this morning in absence of Reverend Collis B. Smith, and then we will have a selection by New Morning Star Praise Team. The family would like to thank all the other ministers that have come into the building. If you would raise your hand at this time so that we can just like, acknowledge your presence. Amen. It's good that you're here and have been praying for this family, and now you stand with them. Reverend Nero. Psalm 23, in the superscript it says, the psalmist shepherd, and may I say this morning, this was Mother Dabney's shepherd as well. David writes, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, your rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou have anointed my head with oil, my cup overfloweth. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I love that last part. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for that last promise that we've got a place where we're going when we have a relationship with you that we're gonna dwell in your house forever. God, on this morning and the days that come, Lord, we ask that you will remind this dear family of where mama is, that she's in your presence. But in the meantime and in between time, God, would you give comfort to the Hunter and Dabney families and indeed this New Morning Star Church family as well as extended family as we grieve and miss Mother Helen Dabney. God, you're the God who heals and a God who you promised to be a comforter. And so we ask that you will send your presence to comfort each and every grieving heart this morning and remind us of all the good times. And we thank you for it. Master, we ask that you will be very present in this service, that you will be a lifter up of the bowed down head in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. He's still worthy to be praised. In the good times and the bad times, he's still worthy. We just want to encourage Sonia, Dre, and the entire family that we love you. We're praying that the joy and the peace and the comfort of the Lord be yours in the days and weeks and months and years ahead. But he's still worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift him up today. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all put your hands together. Give him a little praise.
marvelous, glorious, mighty Lord. I will lift my voice and give you the highest praise. Hallelujah.
That's just how Mama worshiped with us every Sunday. She was here praising the Lord, thanking God for what he's done for her. And now she's dancing in his presence, praising, lifting her head, her hands, bowing her head, and enjoying the presence of the Lord. For Psalm 16 says, in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Imagine the fullness, the completeness of the joy that Mama is experiencing this morning. And she has not a foretaste. She's literally tasting it now. Amen. We get a foretaste taste of glory divine. Y'all from the South, y'all remember when grandmama used to uh, make a batch of uh, cake mix and before she put it in the oven, she brought that midget skillet out. Y'all remember that midget skillet? It was like this tiny size of the bigger skillet and she would pour something in the midget skillet, that's what I call it, first and then put it in the oven and bake it and take it out and she know that if it came out right, she knew that the bigger skillet gonna taste just like the little skillet. While we're here down here, while mama was down here, she had, she had the little skillet. Now mama got the big skillet and she is having a great taste of God's love and his glory face to face. And we rejoice with her this morning. Our acknowledgments, cards, and resolutions is gonna be read by Darnitha Austin. And I'm gonna ask whoever is on the program to come up here, uh, just simply for the live streaming. And then the obituary will be read by Jonna Thomas G or G and then a solo my soul is anchored in the Lord by Pastor Gregory Austin before they come to read the acknowledgement and resu the acknowledgements and resolutions um, not resolution acknowledgements and cards I want to acknowledge those preachers who are here by name Reverend E.F. Ledbetter Jr. Pastor of Hebron City Christian Center Pastor to the sister of Helen Daphne, uh, Sister Patricia Thomas, niece, Sister Jonna G or G? G. And then the nephew, Deacon Cameron G. Then we have Reverend Warner J. Pitts, pastor of the St. James Industrial Missionary Baptist Church, friend to sister, niece, and nephew of Sister Helen Dabney, and then Reverend Gregory C. Austin of New Day Ministries, and finally, Reverend Floyd Davis is in the house today. So let's praise God for all of the support from these clergymen. Would you come at this time, Darnitha? Resolution, February 4th, 2023. Resolution on behalf of the Hunter family. In this time of great loss in your life, only God knows and understands exactly how you feel. The Bible says he is intimately acquainted with all our ways. Yes. Psalms 139 and 3. Your beloved mother, Helen Dabney, has passed on into the loving and righteous hands of God, who has called back that which he had temporarily given. Thank him for the gift of her life, motherhood, and that you have so many fond memories and an enriched life to cherish. We know you are going to greatly miss her. Therefore, the entire New Morning Star Church family stands by you in prayer that the God of all comfort will embrace you closely with his presence, his strength, his comfort, and his love. Sincerely, Pastor Dwayne F. Davis, Sr., New Morning Star Missionary. Covenant Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Stephen J. Thurston, Pastor, January 21st, 2023, to the family of Helen, Mother Helen Dabney, whereas the Lord has called her to an 
new residence, we can surely rejoice in knowing that she is resting from the cares of this world. Let us praise and thank the Lord for allowing her to pass this way on her journey to her eternal home. Whereas Mother Dabney will be greatly missed by her family, friends, and other, others whose lives she's touched, her priceless, precious memories will linger on in their hearts and minds, gone but will never be forgotten. Whereas Mother Dabney, a mother, grandmother, friend, confidant, neighbor, and so much more, but her greatest title was her servant, was servant of the living God. Her presence and participation in these roles will be no more as she takes her rest after giving our God her best in all that she did. That's good news. Humbly submitted on this day, February 4th, in the year of our Lord, 2023, the Hunter family, Arkansas, California, and Illinois. family of Helen Lucille Dabney wishes to acknowledge the prayers, cards, family, I'm sorry, flowers, calls, texts, and social media tributes during this period of bereavement. Thank you and God bless you. Remembering Helen Lucille Murphy. Helen Lucille Murphy was born on June 9, 1936, to Johnny Mae Moore and R.T. Murphy in Leela, Mississippi. Both parents preceded her in death. Helen spent her childhood working on her grandfather's farm before and after school, while helping with her baby cousin. This grew her love for taking care of children. Helen found her faith at a very young age and accepted Christ as her Lord and Savior. In 1962, Helen married John Dabney, who preceded her in death. Helen then moved to Chicago in 1969, worked various factory jobs, but went back to her first love of taking care of children. She joined New Morning Star in 1981 and stood strong in her faith. Working during vacation Bible school, attending church services and Sunday school regularly, while being a part of the senior mission. Helen left her earthly body on January 21st, 2023, and went to be with her heavenly father. Helen's brothers and sisters, Sydney James Thomas, Josh Thomas Jr., John L. Thomas, Bertha Mae Kearney, Johnny Murphy, Thelma Murphy, Judith Murphy, Jesse Murphy, Mary Jane Murphy, and Sally Scott all preceded her in death. Helen leaves to cherish her memory, her children, Marilyn Ann Hadley, Willie James Stewart, Bobby, Sonia Hunter, Andre, her siblings, R.T. Murphy Jr., Patricia Ann Thomas, Walter Murphy, Willie Murphy, Rose, Jack Murphy, Kindness, Moses Murphy, Matthew Murphy, and Alice Murphy. Her grandchildren, Timothy Stewart, Jessica, Connie Hadley, Lashina Stewart, Antonio Hadley, Jessica, Marissa Hadley, Jordy Hadley, Sierra Hadley, Jason Hadley, Cornelia Stewart, and Faith Hunter. Eight great-grandchildren, three great-great-grandchildren, a host of nieces, nephews, and cousins. Her best friend, Desi Roberson, and her second family, the husbands and Browns. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. If you really love God, clap your hands in this place. 
David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. And even at a time like this, we can still bless the Lord. To this great pastor, Pastor Davis, and this great church, it's an honor to be here on this morning. And to my friends whom we love, after talking to Sonia to you two weeks ago, I left out one thing to tell her. What's understood doesn't have to be explained. And we can take that in a whole lot of different areas. But what's understood does not have to be explained. What you and Andre did, taking in mom from day one, is admirable. And having sat where you're sitting in 2020, I understand firsthand. But earth really does not have no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And to your request, we're going to sing, My Soul is Anchored in the Lord Sea Shark. I believe that God is going to take away all the tears, all of the things that we're going through in this life. But one thing's for sure, your soul has to be anchored in the Lord. I wish I had about five witnesses in here. Look at your neighbor and tell him, my soul has to be anchored in the Lord. The storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day, but that hope that lies deep within, it's reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storm been tossed by the waves, by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce. Oh yes they do, but guess what? In the Word of God, in the Word of God, we've got an anchor, yes we do, that keeps us steadfast and unmovable. Despite the time. Hallelujah. The storms, they don't have to see it. No, they don't. But listen, just in case, just in case the winds don't stop blowing in my life, my soul, my soul. Come on, y'all, give 
give God some praise up in here. No matter what happens, our soul can remain anchored in the Lord. Like a tree planted by the rivers of water, we don't have to be moved. And for those of you all who knew Mother Helen Dabney, Jesus was the center of her life. No matter whatever else may have come and gone, she had her focus, her anchor, always in the Lord. And we celebrate that today. Now, we have the remarks section. But before the remarks section, there's a little special thing I would like to do. But before I do the little special thing, I would like all of Mother Dabney's grandchildren and great-grandchildren to stand. All of her grandchildren and great-grandchildren to stand. All of them. Amen. You may be seated. Now, the reason I had you all to do that is because Mama, Grandmama loved, Great Grandmama loved each and every one of you in her own special way. But she spent the majority of her time with her granddaughter, Faith Olivia. And because she was with her from birth all the way up until the moment she passed, she had a special affinity for her. Not to cast any shade or shadow on any of the grandchildren, but she was with her daily. They used to FaceTime each other every night before they went to bed and talk with each other. And so she had that close-knit relationship with her. It did not start when Faith started talking and walking. It started at the Goo Goo Gaga stage. And we have a video clip that I'd like to play with Mother Dabney and Faith sharing a special moment when Faith was probably about three or four months old. And then afterwards, I'm going to ask Faith Olivia if she would come up here and share some of her sentiments as the first order of remarks. So listen in and watch. said she would hope that you would stay around for at least give grandmama five years and she gave her three extra ones. So Faith, would you mind coming and sharing with everyone? I'm gonna have her stand here so everybody can see you on the monitor. Good morning. Good morning. I am the baby on that video. I was three months old. Um, I really love my grandmother. She was my best friend. We had a special love for each other, and she had three more extra years to see me. And I am now eight years old, and I really love her, and I love to share the special moments with her in my life. We also would like um, uh, Daryl Kearney, nephew, Dale, husband, friend, and brother Andre Hunter, son-in-law, to come at this time. And then immediately after Andre Hunter, we're going to have a selection by the New Morning Star praise team. I forgot to tell y'all, two minutes. <laughs> Starting now. First and foremost, giving honor to God who's the head of my life. And as I watched that clip, right, 
I can retrace that back to my grandmother. And I know where she got that from to get at her. See, I'm not fearing anything when it comes to how she lived her life or where she's going to go from here. She prepared for this as long as I've been living. So I'm not fearing anything about that. I just want to know that as long as I can remember, right, and I got a good memory, I want to say about 50-some years ago, right, that type of love that she gave to me then endures now. When I got the call and Willie Jane told me she was gone, right, and I searched my heart and I searched my mind and I searched my soul, but that love still was there. Amen. She gave me the best of her for as long as I can remember. Before I know what an auntie or an uncle or anything was, I knew that love. That special, special love. And I just pray now, right, for each and every last one of us to have to endure without them. May God give us peace now. Thank you. To God be the glory. To God be the glory, y'all. Miss Dabney was my best friend, and I've known Miss Dabney ever since Sonia and Lavinia were 12 years old. And uh, I would go to the nursing home to visit Miss Dabney, and I would ask, and I would say, Miss Dabney, how you doing? She said, I'm doing all right, but she'd always say, I love the Lord, and she loved her children. She always loved her children, and she loved her family. And I would go to the nurse. She would. I would go to the nursing home and visit her. She would. Um, she would be in the dining room, and I would go to the dining room, and I would say, "Miss Dabney, how you doing?" She would say, "Well, I'm hanging high, but not too low." And I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm hanging high, but not too low. And I would laugh, and I say, "Thank the Lord that you're hanging high, Miss Dabney." And I love Miss Dabney, and I would sometimes go to the dining room where Miss Dabney was in the facility. And I would be around her friends. She would say, these are my church members. She was introducing me to being her church member. And I would say, she would say, well, come on, let's go to the room. Let's go to my room. I said, well, okay, Miss Dabney. And she said, well, uh, I, and she loved the Lord. She loved her friends. She said, well, I, I, um, uh, let's go to my, and I would go to her room. And she, she would uh, tell me how she loved her family. And uh, she would, and I would say, Miss Dabney, I say, how are they treat you? And she said, they better treat me right. They better treat me good. And she would take her cane and shake it. And she said, if they didn't, if they didn't, you see this cane, I'm going to beat her over the head with this cane. And then she would look at me and say, now, you know, I shouldn't say that, should I, dear? <laughs> and I said, Miss Dabney, and I would laugh, I would laugh, I would laugh. And we would, we would go on, pick, we would go on holidays uh, uh, with our family. And we would go to Miss Dabney's house on Christmas, and Miss Dabney would cook a pineapple coconut cake. If she didn't do the pineapple coconut cake, she would uh, make, bake a, a banana pudding. And uh, she would come to my house, and I would do Thanksgiving uh, dinner. But I love Miss Dabney. Miss Dabney was my, when you say friend, she was more than a friend to me. And I loved her, and God bless her. Good morning, good morning, Star family and friends. You know, when I first uh, heard that my mother-in-law passed, I was going to write a poem, and I said, that wouldn't do my mother-in-law justice. So the Lord just told me to speak from your heart. So I'm speaking from my heart today. So I want to share a couple of attributes about my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law was kind. She was loving. She was giving. Uh, she was patient, and she was also long-suffering. Most, we don't really understand that, but she did. She endured a lot. But she was really patient with me. I um, met my mother-in-law eight months before my mother passed. And after my mother passed, my mother-in-law stepped right in and became a mother to me uh, through cooking dinners um, and just loving upon me. My mother-in-law was really patient with me. Uh, one of her great attributes, she saw me give my life to the Lord. 
And I know my mother-in-law loved the Lord because she was patient with me. And she always showed that Christ-centered love. And I got the same love from her that I got from my mother. It's like after my mother passed away, she came right in and she became a second mother to me. So things did not skip a beat. I want to let my wife know that your mother loved you. And your mother was there for you, and you were there for your mother. Faith. So you don't have to hold your head down. As Reverend Nero said, maybe a couple of years ago in one of his sermons, she's in a better place now. Um, Faith, your mother, your grandmother loved you. Um, when I got sick a couple of years ago, my mother mind started to slip. But when I started to rebound, we had those daily conversations. And instead of focusing on her, she would ask me every day, every single day, Andre, are you doing OK? Are you all right? And I say, yeah, mom, I'm fine. So I know with that, her legacy lives on. Her legacy lives on through my wife. It lives on through my daughter. And her legacy has lifted me. And she got to see me turn the corner. She saw me get my life over to Christ. And now I'm doing some great things, some other things with my life. And she would be proud of me. I love her. I'm going to miss her. I adore her. Me and her had a beautiful relationship. And I will always honor her as her son-in-law. I've committed my life to my wife and my daughter. And I'm going to always do that. She, know, she knew leaving here that her daughter and her granddaughter were in good hands, and they are. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Hallelujah. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Hallelujah. We just want to encourage you to, when the phone calls stop and the emails and text messages continue to call on the name of Jesus. There's no name above the name of Jesus. There's healing in that name. There's deliverance in that name. There's power in that name. He's going to see you through this journey. So continue to call on his name. Hallelujah.
cover our minds, cover our hearts, Lord. Carry us, carry us, carry us through. He's our anchor, He's our rock, yes, He is. Hallelujah. Call on that name. No other name. Hallelujah. If you were to turn your attention with me to Mama's favorite hymn from the Psalms, Psalm 23, verse 6, the second part reads as follows. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This morning I want to preach about the Lord's forever house. Would you bow with me please? Father, we thank you so much for this hour that you've allowed us to come to celebrate the love, the life, the legacy of Mother Helen Lucille Dabney. We thank you for the gift of her life and now, Lord, you have left us with her essence to never be forgotten. Thank you so much for this time, and I ask that you would bless your word so those who are your people will be encouraged and lifted and edified, and those who are not your people would be drawn to you as the great shepherd of the sheep. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. To the Hunter family, the Dabney family, the New Morning Star Church family, and extended family members and friends, I stand here with great difficulty in my heart to close out the life story of Mother Helen Lucille Dabney. I met Mother Dabney back in 1987 when I became a member of this church. I also met this young little ponytailed hair girl named Sonia Hunter who was singing in the choir. Sonia grew up to be a fine young woman, met some dude with some game, and <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all the real side, talking smack, had some good looks, and stole her heart, but he had to get through Mother Helen Dabney in order to marry Sonia, and as you all know, today it's history, he made the cut and married Sonia. And the two of them blessed her with a princess named Faith Olivia Hunter. And Faith always called her Grammy. And she wore that title like a crown. And she often boasted about her son, Willie James. Every time I asked her about him, she would light up like a Christmas tree. And she would just go into it. And then she would tell me how much she longed for her and her daughter, Marilyn, to bridge the gap in their relationship. That never left her. She always wanted that. And she loved her other grandchildren as well. When I became Mother Dabney's pastor back in 2001, 22 years ago, she was always pleasant with me, always greeted me with a smile, always told me the truth about anything. And y'all know she would speak her mind on any subject. And when we, she wasn't supposed to say anything, she'd just say, well, pastor, we just going to go ahead and keep on praying about that. <laughs> when she finally moved to the senior's residence, my wife and I would often visit her by surprise. When my wife asked her how she was doing, she would always say, I'm hanging high, but not that low. I'm hanging high, but not that high. One day I showed up and they told me where she was in the break room finishing up lunch. So I told them, I said, don't tell her I'm here. So I went in the break room, she had finished eating, and I sat behind her. She didn't know I was there. And the nurse's aide came up to her and said, Miss Hunter, are you ready? So that I can go take you to get you a shower? And she said, yeah. And behind her, I said, yeah, let's go and give her a shower and I'll help out. Without turning her head back, when she said, you's a man, you ain't getting in no shower with me. <laughs> the 
then I said, well, at least let me walk you to your room. She still hadn't turned around, and she said, okay, and then she turned around to try to see if I was her type. <laughs> and she said, Pastor Davis, oh my goodness, you had me going there thinking some man was going to get in the shower with me. She said, no way, no way. And then she said, you always playing. On January 6th, when I visited Mother Dabney, they moved her to another room on my last visit and informed me when I got there. Nobody called me ahead of time and asked my permission to move her. Nobody informed me that she was being moved. But you all know how information travels. I was going to find out sooner or later. And when I got to the reception desk, I was told where she was. I was given specific instructions to go down the hall, go past the chapel to unit A, and you'll find her in room 132. On the evening of January 21st, I received the notification that Mother Dabney had been moved again. No one asked my permission for her to be moved. Neither was nobody obligated to tell me where she had gone. She had transferred from one location to another. But y'all know information travels. I was going to find out sooner or later anyway. This move was her last move. This move was like no other move. Every move she made before this move was horizontal move. She moved from the south of Mississippi and came up north. She moved from apartment to apartment in a horizontal way. She finally settled in into her own house, horizontally moving. And then she went to one senior's home, horizontally moving to the next senior home. But for the very first time, Mother Daphne made a vertical move. She went from earth to heaven. She went from apartment to glory. She went from labor to reward. And although God didn't ask our permission, although God didn't inform us ahead of time, we know where she is. She's now living inside of the Lord's eternal forever house. See, 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 the homes that we move in here on earth will be occupied by us for a limited time while we live. And we're either going to move out or go to another one. But then one of these days, we're going to move on. We're going to move across the bridge of death into the place where all of us are going to spend eternity. That means forever. Question, if you were to die today, do you know for sure, without a doubt, where you'll spend eternity. Oh, you're going to die. You know, they, they don't did the stats on death. They said it's one per person. You can't die for nobody else and nobody can die for you. Will you sin at the moment of your death into the Lord's forever house or will you descend into the devil's forever hell? you got to be concerned about this before you take your last breath. This is no joking matter. This is not something you push aside into a day and time where you feel like making up your mind. This is not funny like those three old ladies sitting around one day talking about, what do you want people to say at your funeral? The first old lady said, well, child, I want them to say I was a good poison. I did everything I could good for everybody. I want to be known as a good person. Second old lady said, well, I want to be known for, for being a good mother, for being a good wife to my husband and to my children. The third old lady said, well, child, you know, I want them to say, look, she's moving. She ain't dead. <laughs> as humorous as that story is, ain't nobody going to be moving because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 7, and inasmuch as it is appointed for man to die once, after this comes the judgment. God is going to hold court 
on Judgment Day. When you die and stand before God, you're not going up if you don't know him. You're not going up to uh, play patty cake with God. God is going to be sitting on a throne, the Bible says, judging every person. Why? Because he's holding everybody accountable for keeping or breaking his Ten Commandments, his holy law. And if anyone is found breaking one of them, you are guilty of the entire law and you will be sentenced and you will have to go to hell with the devil forever. Oh, by the way, I need to inform some of y'all, before you die, you need a lawyer. You're going to need a lawyer. Who's going to represent you at the judgment seat of God after you done broke his law? Who's going to stand up for you when you cannot stand up for yourself? You're going to need a lawyer before you die. And God has already provided one for us. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. There is only one mediator between God and man, and that is the man, Jesus Christ. He is our advocate. He is our lawyer. He is the one that's going to legally represent us because we broke a legal law. Did you know that hell was created only for the devil and his angels that went rogue before God created the heavens and the earth? God never intended for people to go to hell, but because we too rebelled against God and have committed some devilish sins, we will also go to a devil's hell. And God knows who's who at that time. You can fool yourself. You can fool me, and you can fool other people about what you think about when you die and where you're going, but you ain't going to fool God. God already knows where you're on your way to. The question is, you got to become sealed and satisfied and solid in the knowledge that you know him so that when you die, he will welcome you home. Let me help you all out to help you all understand where you're going. Heaven is for holy, sanctified people who have been blood washed by Jesus Christ. All their sins have been forgiven. God's given them a new heart. They have a nature now compatible to heaven. Those who don't have that, they have a nature that loves sin, that loves everything that is contrary to God, that celebrates sin, that ignore God, come up with their own religion and ignore God. Guess what? You have a different nature. So only those who have a saved nature will go to heaven and those without that nature will go to hell. Because if you are unsaved, you ain't going to enjoy heaven. Your nature ain't compatible with heaven. Ain't no stealing. Ain't no adultery. Ain't no homosexuality. There's sinners in hell and there's saints in heaven. And you are going to where your nature is already set. Let me show you what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verses 31 through 34 and verse 41. Listen to what he said. This is future. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. That's the judgment seat. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Then he will also say to those on his left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. So according to the Bible, according to Jesus, on the day of judgment, The only way you and I can escape going to hell forever is that we got to become one of God's sheep and not remain one of the devil's goats. All God's sheep say, (laughs) all the goats say, ain't here too many goats. Everybody want to be shoats, trying to blend the goats and the sheep, trying to be a wolf in sheep clothing. God knows who you are. And so you better figure this thing out before you die because guess what? Folk dying every day and they dying young, medium age, senior and old. So you better settle your account with God because when you die, it's going to be forever. Y'all know you don't get no second chance after you die. You can't get up to God's throne and say, see what had happened was. You can't say, is granddaddy here? Can I talk to my friend? No, you're standing alone before God to give an account for your life. Let me tell you something. That's why you can't judge nobody else. There's only one judge, and he's going to settle 
the accounts. Now, this brings me back to the scripture text in Psalm 23. That was my introduction, y'all. Uh, King David... <laughs> King David wrote Psalm 23 to express his relationship with the shepherd. Everybody in America knows or have read Psalm 23. And I want us to read it together. Now, I'm going to use the old King James version of the Bible. I ain't going to do one of these new versions where it says, the Lord is my homeboy, the Lord is my road dog. You know, no, we're going to go back to great-great-grandmama's big old Bible where you have to flip it over to Psalm 23. And let's read it together. Read it with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And what will happen? And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The only way you can escape the judgment is to have a relationship with the shepherd of Psalm 23. Just because you know it don't mean you know the shepherd. They had this actor one day uh, told him to uh, quote Psalm 23, and he was competing with a preacher. And so the actor took out Psalm 23, and in that stern Martin Luther King kind of voice, the Lord is my shepherd. And everybody was like, oh, man, they was clapping and everything. And after he finished, they told the preacher, now beat that. And so the preacher stood there and quoted it. And as he quoted it, the actor started crying. And by the time he got to the end of it, everybody's acting the actor, asking the actor, why are you crying when you outdid him quoting the 23rd numbers of Psalm? He said, let me tell y'all something. I know the 23rd numbers of Psalm, but that preacher know the shepherd. There's a difference in, in knowing the 23rd number of Psalms and knowing the shepherd. And the only way he, you can know him is you got to come through God's son, Jesus Christ, who over 2,000 and nearly 23 years ago died for the sins of mankind. And he is the only one that can clean up a goat yes, yes, yes. and make him a sheep. Let me show you how he does it in Isaiah chapter 53, verses 5 and 6 says this. But he, meaning Jesus, was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Here's the clincher. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. So Jesus died on the cross as payment for our sins so that we can escape an eternal death in hell as payment. To have the Lord as your shepherd, you must first know him as your savior. You have to claim Isaiah 53 before you claim Psalm 23. Come to Jesus today and place your faith in him as God's only remedy to forgive you, to wash away your sins, to give you a new heart and a new life capable of having a relationship with him. Do, Y'all do know death is about relationship. When a person dies, they go back to their creator. So if you don't have a relationship on this side, you won't have one on that side. That's why it's time for you to get one on this side so you can have one on that side. Then and only then will you become one of his sheep. And the Lord knows his sheep. The apostle John wrote in John chapter 10, verse 4 through 5, it says, when he puts forth all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. A stranger they simply will not follow, but will flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Verse 14, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they followed me. Mother Dabney met the shepherd and Mother Dabney knew the shepherd. You know, everybody in America claimed that they believe in God and that they are a Christian. Jesus said his real sheep hear his voice and obey him. If you claim to be one of his sheep, let me ask y'all something. Is your life shepherd approved? 
That's a deep question. Is, is your life shepherd approved? If he says, don't do that, do you stop? If he says, do this, do you start? Is he your shepherd? Then you need to hear his voice and follow. That's the nature of the relationship of Psalm 23. Then and only then can you experience the privileges of Psalm 23, where the Lord is your shepherd. Let me quickly give you some of these privileges right out of the text. First of all, he takes care of all of your needs. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That means if you're following God, God's got your needs covered as a person. Secondly, God gives you a heart of peace and rest. Verse 2 says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He's the one that gives your heart peace and rest. Everybody is looking for peace. Everybody is looking for rest. You don't need therapy. You need a shepherd. Oh, boy, I done said something there. You don't need a therapist. You need a shepherd. He'll give you the heart peace and rest that you need. Thirdly, he'll lead your heart to do the right things instead of doing sinful things. The Bible says in verse uh, 3, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You can't be claiming to be a follower of Christ and one of his sheep and he's your shepherd and you're just living in all kinds of sin and can't nobody tell you nothing. And the shepherd has said, I'm only going to lead you in the paths of righteousness for my name's sake so that your life could be giving glory to me. But if you stay in sin, if you walk away from me as the shepherd, i got to leave you on your own. You cannot have that intimate righteousness that is found only in me. You will always have a propensity to do evil things. Fourthly, he will be with you in times of sorrow. The Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. God says when the time of death comes, I'm there with you. I'm going to support you as a shepherd. Fifthly, he will deal with your enemies. Verse 5 says, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Y'all folk that love to fight and love to get back at folk, you need to follow the shepherd and let him handle them. You just be still and know that he's God and let your enemies be taken care of by God. When you are a sheep, you don't fight back. You don't strike back. You pray back. And you ask God to take care of your haters. And then lastly, he will show you his favor throughout your life. He says, thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You know, that's the proof that you're following the shepherd. Look back at your life and see if you see a whole lot of strings of goodness and strings of mercy that have followed you. Or when you look back, you see drama, you see heartache, you see heartbreak. That's all you see. But when you follow the shepherd, he says that he's going to show you his favor throughout your lifetime. I know Mother Dabney had some little struggles toward the end of her life, but when she looked back over her life, she can truly say God's goodness has kept me. God's mercy has walked with me. And now I am with him. She had no problem letting others know that she was saved and that Jesus can save them. And she wanted especially her sons, her daughter, and the rest of her grandchildren to come to know Jesus like she did. But she's no longer here. She's in the Lord's house forever. Let me tell you this story I love telling about a young little boy. He was about five years old. He had terminal cancer and he was getting close to his death. And as he lay there in the hospital room, dying, breathing, he asked his mother, he said, Mama, does death hurt? Mama couldn't answer. She walked out of the room crying, went down the hall. She said, Lord, please give me an answer for this little boy as he is dying. I don't know what to tell him. So after she prayed, she walked back in the room and she said, Son, remember those movie nights when we were downstairs in the family room and we would eat popcorn and watch these Disney movies and you would fall asleep on the sofa? He said, yeah. And she said, when you woke up the next morning, where were you? He said, I was in my bed upstairs. She said, how did you get there? He said, I, I don't know. I was asleep. She said, let me tell you what happened. When you fell asleep, your daddy, with his strong and loving arms, came and picked you up and put you on his shoulder and carried you upstairs and laid you in your bed for a good night's sleep. Where is Mother Dabney right now? 
Well, Mother Dabney took her last breath on Saturday afternoon, January 21st, and the Lord sent his angels down there to where she was to scoop her up and take her up in their arms and escort her to her mansion in the sky. If you were to ask her now, Mother Dabney, are you hanging high? She said, no, I'm living high. And I'm forever high. Why? Because Jesus promised, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, John 14, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I wouldn't have lied to you. Jesus said, I ain't lying. (laughs) I wouldn't have lied to you. But he said, but I go to prepare a place for you. And I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know whether thou goest. How can we know the way? Verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. If you don't go through Jesus, then you don't go to heaven. If you refuse to ask him to forgive you for your sins, repent of them and allow him to wash them away and allow him to be Lord of your life, then your court day is coming where you will have to stand before God without a Savior on your way to a devil's hell forever. Why not call out to Jesus today and ask him to save you? As for Mother Dabney right now, oh, it's on and popping right now, y'all. She got her, her forever house before we got ours, but I must inform you all that this was only part one of Mother Dabney's life. Part two is, it has already happened according to the Bible. Once her body gets planted in the ground this afternoon, it'll only be there temporarily because she's going to get back up one day. She will move again, if you will, in that great getting up morning. See, when the emergency medical team came and she had expired, they tried their best to revive her. Let me tell y'all something. That was above their pay grade. They could not revive her. Only one person could bring her back because that's not their job description. Only God has the power of resurrection, and one day he's going to do that on mama's behalf. I know what I'm talking about because Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 4.13, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep so that you will not grieve as the rest, so that you will not grieve as those who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again from the dead, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. Let me tell y'all, before you go to sleep, you better fall asleep in Jesus. The Bible says, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. You don't want to die without Jesus. You don't want to sleep in the grave without Jesus because God has set an alarm clock of resurrection one day when he's going to come back. And Paul goes on to say, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ. Mama Helen Lucille Dabney is going to rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the air. Here it is. And so shall we always be with the Lord and the Lord forever. How so then he says, therefore, comfort one another with these words. Comfort each other, family, that mama is where she needs to be. Comfort one another and let, her, let everybody know that she received Christ as her Lord and Savior. Comfort one another in that mama taught you something. Grandmama left you something. Comfort one another another in the fact that since you know Jesus, you're going to see her again. Comfort her. Comfort each other in the fact that you too can be saved. You too can know this Christ. You too can be born again. You too can have your sins washed away. Comfort you. Comfort ye. My people says the Lord, say to Israel, your warfare has ended. Your sins have been forgiven. That's what God is offering this morning for us temporary folk to get a chance to know this eternal Savior who has a house already prepared for those who choose. What is your choice today? Will you receive the shepherd, Jesus Christ himself? Or will you walk out of here still rejecting him, living your life without him, following the world, following evil, following your evil uh, uh, nature or whatever the case may be? Or will you surrender this day and say, God, I recognize 
you're not my shepherd. I want to become one of your sheep. Would you forgive me for my sins? Would you come into my life? Would you give me a new heart? What is all of that based on? The fact that he judicially died on the cross for all of our sins. And he tore up the receipt and said, it is finished. The law has no more bearing on us. And we are free indeed to be his sheep. If you are not one of his this morning, would you bow your head with me real quickly? I'm going to do what I do on Sunday mornings that mom would have wanted me to do. And that is give you an invitation to turn your life over to Christ. Would you bow and pray with me? Father, there are those who are under the sound of my voice that the Spirit of God has reckoned with this morning. Even in the middle of their grief, they see their need for you. As they call out to you for salvation, for cleansing of sin and a brand new life, Lord, would you give them what they ask? You said, all who come to me, I will in no wise cast out. And that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And as they confess you, Lord, make salvation for them real. Allow them to not only experience eternal life for the future, but eternal life with you walking as one of your sheep right now. Lord, we thank you for this time and for your word. Pray that someone will receive you as their Savior. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I pray that you would have listened carefully and have done business in your heart with God. Don't allow the grief to overcome your reality that you need God. He loves you. He wants you. Make the choice this day. I'm going to ask that our directors will come forward, and we're going to need at least three or four women to assist with the bearing of the flowers. The repast will be here following the internment. Those of y'all who would love to come back or stay until we return, you may do so. They've got plenty of food to accommodate. All of you all, they even have some to-go plates <laughs> if you need it. But we're going now to lay her to rest, her body to rest, plant it in the ground, and allow God. Okay, as we are still in service, would you be so kind as to, as we're escorting the family out, to remain quiet as the praise team sings, and then we will escort everybody outside, and the director's going to ask if you would so kindly not to gather in fellowship, but get a sticker to place on your car so that we can make it to the cemetery in sufficient enough time. chapter 7 verse 9 through 17 reads after these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could count from every nation and all tribes and peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the lamb clothed in white robes and palm branches were in their hands and they cried out with a loud voice saying salvation to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb and all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne of God, worshiping, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might to be our God forever and ever. Amen.
Yeah. 